Judith Ortiz Kofer is a highly regarded poet, essayist, and novelist who wrote extensively about the challenges of living in a world split between her Puerto Rican heritage and her life in the United States. Her work focuses on the experiences of Puerto Rican Americans and the struggle to reconcile conflicting expectations from her family, including pressure to assimilate to Anglo customs while not forgetting her roots. While born in Puerto Rico, Kofer was primarily raised and educated in New Jersey. She began writing as a grad student and her work has been published in literary periodicals, as well as chapbooks and collections by small presses. Although Ortiz Kofer is best known for her works of creative nonfiction, she began her writing career with poetry, which she felt, quote, contains the essence of language. Her early chapbook, Peregrina, which appeared in 1986, won the Riverstone International Chapbook Competition, and she published various other collections of poetry, including Terms of Survival, Reaching for the Mainland, and A Love Story Beginning in Spanish. I think poetry has made me more disciplined Kofer observed, it taught me how to write because to write a poem takes so much skill. Poetry contains the essence of language. Every word weighs a ton. Poetry taught me about economizing in language and about the power of language. So I will never stop writing poetry. Now here's a brief um, excerpt from an interview where Ortiz Kofer talks about her writing process. Take a listen. I have a little essay called 5 a.m. Writing as Ritual. And it has to do with the fact that at some point I felt the need to declare myself a writer. That didn't mean that I would give up everything and go lead the bohemian life. It meant that I understood that you actually have to imagine yourself as an artist before you can become an artist. And the way that I did it was getting up at five o'clock in the morning and writing for two hours every day before everyone else woke up. I know that that doesn't sound appealing to people, but uh, the point of the story is that you have to allocate a place and time uh, to become an artist, just like if you want to be the best basketball player that ever existed. You can't sit in a room and say, I am going to be the greatest. You have to get out there to the court and practice and practice. Uh, a musician has to practice, uh, a singer has to sing, a writer has to uh, practice uh, writing. And so incorporating writing into your schedule uh, is the very first act in becoming a writer. There is no such thing as a boring subject, only a writer who is bored with the subject. I said, I know because I've read, you know, books on golf, for example, or chess, you know, and it's always the human element involved in activities that uh, don't necessarily interest me. Uh, and so um, basically I, I tell my students, uh, look at this assignment and then look at ways that you can make it yours. Uh, one of the uh, assignments that I have given them to challenge them to come up with something very interesting to say about an object that they have never thought about is to actually think about something that they have seen in their homes. Uh, one of the things that can turn something really boring is mawkishness, which is a word I love and rarely get to use. It just means getting sentimental over something. I said it's better to write about a doorstop what if at your house someone was using an old trophy as a doorstop? What does that mean? Why a doorstop? You know, why was it used that way? Who did it belong to? Um, what history did it bring forward? Uh, or on the other hand, uh, is there a dish in the kitchen that is cracked and no longer attractive, but your mother brings it out every Thanksgiving? I know there is one at my house. Uh, my husband is the cook, and he always brings out this dish that belonged to his grandmother. Uh, and uh, it, it's stained from years of use, and you can hardly tell the flowers uh, decorating it, but when he puts it on the table, it means it's Thanksgiving. 
And so uh, if I were to give him the assignment, I would say, first of all, don't get sentimental. Let's start out, where was this dish bought? If nobody knows in the family, then imagine it. Uh, and write 10 things down about this object and then turn that into a story, you know, either beginning with, because the story is not always interesting if you begin at the beginning. You could begin with, I set down the dish on the table. It is Thanksgiving 2010. In th Thanksgiving 1960, I saw it at its full, full, in its full beauty in the center of the table at my grandmother's house. Branching out from poetry, Kofer published a well-received novel, The Line of the Sun, in 1989, and then her second novel, The Meaning of Consuelo, was published in 2003. Perhaps Kofer's most well-known work is The Latin Deli, an Ars Poetica, which was nominated for the Pulitzer Prize in 1992. According to the Poetry Foundation, the Latin Deli focuses on a place where Spanish immigrants meet to talk to each other in their native language, the Latin Deli, and it offers a respite from the culture clash they've experienced in America as they walk down the aisles reciting the names of Spanish food like poetry, they are able to hang on to the traditions of the past in order to maintain a clear sense of their cultural heritage. Kofer transfers her own experiences as an immigrant to art and establishes a link between herself and the deli owner. She suggests that through her poems and stories that center on the lives of immigrants, she, like the owner of the deli, offers comfort and a sense of identity to others who share her heritage. And again, this is from um, the uh, Poetry Foundation, I think it's a very good overview um, of the collection of poems in the Latin Deli. Kofer once told an interviewer that the infinite variety and power of language interests me. I never cease to experiment with it. As a native Puerto Rican, my first language was Spanish. It was a challenge not only to learn English, but to master it enough to teach it and the ultimate goal to write poetry in it. Kofer passed away in 2016, and at the time of her death, she was remembered for being a literary mother by critics, someone who was always willing to nurture the voices of younger writers. <laughs>